Do you fear meeting new people, ordering food at a restaurant, having to go into the bank, going to a car dealership, calling about your internet service, <laughs> getting on the phone with your boss, taking part in a Zoom meeting, running into someone in the grocery store, being alive. <laughs> if any of these things um, are relatable to you, then you could probably use meditation. Today, I just wanna to talk to you guys about something that I've been trying in the last few months that actually has really helped me. I have made a couple of videos in the last year or so talking a little bit about anxiety for me and how it's affected my life and kind of where I think it stirred from. And so now I'm actually being proactive in trying to do some things to not only cope with my anxiety, but also kind of overcome it. And I think it might be working. Some of you may know that I, well, hold on, I need to get my candle. I have a candle. It's gonna be in the shot. There we go. There's one up there too. Okay, now we can begin. Um, so some of you may know that I am currently in the process of getting my yoga teacher certificate certification <laughs> and as a part of that I also decided to do a 40-day challenge um, yoga challenge that involves practicing daily meditating and journaling now I don't know about you but I'm someone who not only has never attempted meditating in my life but also I'm just very, I was very anti-meditation. I'm someone who just like, I have a hard time sitting still in general. I'm constantly multitasking. It just, it's gotten to a point where if I'm working, like I'm also on my phone and I'm also looking something up here and doing something else. I'm usually texting people. When I watch TV at night, I'm generally texting people. Um, texting is also a thing that I do so I don't have to call people <laughs> but it's gotten to a point where when it came to meditation I just was like blah first of all just sitting still in general it was like difficult for me to do and sitting still and just with myself sounds like a terrible time. It sounded like a terrible time. It didn't sound enjoyable to me at all. I also had a hard time for the longest time sleeping at night and falling asleep at night. And there's just still many nights where I end up just lying awake, unable to fall asleep. And it does, it is my anxiety bubbling up. It's all the things that I'm worrying about, thinking about, stressing about, pondering about, wondering if I should be worrying about. And it's just gotten to a point where I have not ever really wanted to go on medication. I feel like that's still another step that I could take, but I don't feel like I'm doing all the things I could do before doing that, before seeking that as the next option. <sighs> so, here's me trying to sit in one spot. Because I do believe lots of things in life happen for a reason and i did begin this yoga teacher training and this yoga challenge to seek out some answers and also to just help me on a very personal level with you know doing the work doing the inquiry asking questions to myself to try and dig deeper under the layers to find out where this anxiety stems from because at the end of the day anxiety is fear it's fear of the unknown. It's fear of what you think might happen. It's fear of what you don't think is going to happen. It's the fear. It's creating a whole outcome that doesn't exist and then sitting back and worrying about that. So definitely since my separation and divorce, I've been more focused on myself and trying to uncover where my anxiety stems from because it definitely affects not only my day to day life, and it's exhausting, but it also affects my relationships with other people. It's not fun for other people to have to hear about my anxiety, have to witness me having complete meltdowns because of my anxiety, also me creating and catastrophizing outcomes between me and my other relationships because of my anxiety. 
And so it's not just only affecting me, but it's a rippling effect. And it's something that I just want to start being much more proactive about trying to overcome or understand. So that's a big roundabout way of kind of getting to meditation. And the fact that I have always avoided it. I know that it's supposed to be really good for you and you're supposed to sit and be in peace and your mind's quiet and all these like epiphanies happen. At least that's just what I thought meditation was. So I always avoided doing it because I don't like sitting still. I don't like sitting in general. I don't want to think about all my problems and then have to think about how I shouldn't be thinking about them. So if you're anything like me and any of this sounds familiar, I want to share with you what I'm doing now that's actually helping and working and I actually look forward to meditating. First off, the first thing that I did was I started to remove the the rules that I had in my mind that I'd created or that I'd heard other people say or what, the things that I've seen other people do that I thought was the correct and only way to do meditation. So for me now, I've been doing it for quite a few months and I'm still laying down. I know you're supposed to, or we hear that you're supposed to be seated, you know, with your head, the crown and the lights coming through and your palms open and cross-legged or feet on the floor. I'm still not there. I'm most comfortable and most able to, to focus outside of my body and my actual physical discomfort if I can lay down. So I lay down. A thing that I've learned in life more recently is that it's not cheating if you are modifying something that's going to be positive for you so that it's something that you'll do. Just like working out or diet or anything, we all need to personalize these things and set ourselves up for success and enjoy these things because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to keep doing it. So I lay down. I also like to light candles and sometimes um, they're scented candles or I spray something like there's this really great scented dress check sleep spray. I got it from like a subscription box. It's got lavender and stuff in it. It just smells nice and it kind of like sets the mood for okay this is what I'm going to do right now. And another big thing is that I only committed to five minutes to start. Five minutes. That is completely effective and it totally changed my perspective on meditation when I decided that I only would start with five minutes. The other thing that I do want to say is that when I chose to do a five minute meditation, I also knew for myself laying down, having a shorter meditation and having it guided would really is really what works for me. Guided meaning that someone is talking to me you know, kind of walking me, guiding me through the meditation. And that's a completely acceptable way to meditate, especially if you're a beginner. A guided meditation just basically is gonna help you stay present and get the most out of those five, 10, 15 minutes, however long that you choose to do it. And eventually if you want to do it on your own, wow, good for you. So I'm gonna link below couple of my favorite current meditations that I do. Some days I just want to do five minutes. I can't imagine sitting for longer than that. Other days I look forward to doing a 20 minute meditation. Right now for me, they're always guided. And an important thing with a guided meditation, and there's so many on YouTube, there's so many out there. I'm sure there's so many all over the place that you can find, is keep looking until you find the one that feels good for you. Certain people's voices bothered me, certain topics bothered me, certain backgrounds sounds bothered me. I spent probably two, three, four days just like listening to the first 30 seconds of guided meditations until I found one where I enjoyed it, I liked the person's voice, I liked the direction, I liked where it went, and then I actually would just save it to my phone. I've downloaded a couple right onto my phone so that I can easily find them again. So the last thing I want to say just about finding to get started in meditation and finding what works for you is to know that there's nothing miraculous that's supposed to happen. Absolutely nothing miraculous is going to happen. You're not going to have crazy epiphanies. I mean, you might, 
but I mean, you're not going to start floating off of the ground. You're not going to have all your problems solved. You're not going to have a completely silent brain. It's completely natural and normal for us to have constant chatter. And basically for me, what I do with meditation is I try and just stay as focused and aware of the thoughts coming in to my brain because they will not stop for me. They're always there, but I try and just like swat them away. And what I'm recently really applying is just not applying judgments to those thoughts. So when a thought comes up, good or bad, I just go, oh, I'm thinking that. And then I just let it continue to float along. And the way to allow those thoughts to float by is just by breathing. Staying connected to your breath is pretty much it. And any guided meditation will remind you of that. So those are just my tips in terms of getting started and finding one that works for you. How this all links to me and my anxiety and how it's helped me is that it's actually made me realize how many crazy thoughts I have in my brain all the time. Um, with the guided meditations, I've been able to pick and choose some that focus on certain areas that I feel like I need help re-examining or changing my perspective or releasing at least the judgments that I have on myself. So I've done ones for stress, for healing, for self-love, for positive affirmations and it really is just for me been such a eye-opener to how much our internal dialogue affects our day-to-day -day lives and how we imagine and create the world around us. I'm definitely someone who in the past has catastrophized things, thought the absolute worst scenario, um, doubted myself, you know, imagined that everything was going to fall apart and I was going to be a complete failure. And I've come to more of a realization in recent times from meditation that you can also think the opposite. And it's just, it's a, it's the same amount of energy to do. And you don't have to just, and you, instead of just going to the worst case scenario, you can also just imagine the best case scenario. And me doing that was my way of trying to control my environment. And if I felt like I could prepare myself for when a disaster struck, then I would be prepared. But also if the disaster doesn't happen, which often it doesn't when it comes to anxiety, you just actually put your body and your brain through complete turmoil for nothing. This past year has been tough for everyone in the world and also in my personal life, I've had some big changes and transitions with separation, divorce, moving, meeting someone new, um, starting a new relationship. And I've started to make more of a relationship with when I'm starting to feel either down, depressed. And a lot of those depressed feelings come from my anxiety of like imagining like worst case scenarios and it's all a spiraling effect and pulling myself aside and actually going into the bedroom, closing the door and doing a five minute meditation, a 10 minute meditation, a 15 minute meditation. It, may, it has made such a huge impact on my life, including with my struggles with social media. I don't know about you, but waking up in the morning every day and scrolling on Instagram for 10 minutes is like life ruining. Um, we live in a world of comparison and highlight reels and, you know, Photoshop and just standards that are completely unreachable. And when I take that five or 10 minutes to meditate, to just close a door, to be quiet and not be on my phone, not be on my computer, not be at watching TV, I'm plugging in that way and also just disconnecting a bit from the, the chatter in my mind and all the kind of the programming that's happened that we're not even aware of from when we were a child to now because of media and cult, our culture and all that sort of thing. It really has empowered me to when I have rougher days and, and, and moments when I look in the mirror or, you know, if I'm having a, an argument with someone to realize that I can take a step back, reevaluate what's happening, and I can choose a different reaction. I can choose a different response. I can 
choose a different way of thinking about that situation. This is still for me very much a, a journey that I'm on. I do not meditate every day. I'm not some person that's like, now I get up and I meditate first thing and then before I go to bed, no. But I'm trying. I definitely have alarms set in my phone for in the morning and in the evening. Either I do both or I do one or sometimes I do none, but I try to do it at least once a day if I can for a minimum of five minutes. Sometimes I can go longer and sometimes I can't and that's totally fine and it's honestly just like exercise for your brain just as much as it's important to work out and to eat well and to take your vitamins and you know have good relationships with other people and pursue your passions it's important to take care of your mind. It's such a magical, mystical, powerful, wonderful, beautiful, scary, amazing tool and we don't pay enough attention to it, I don't think. At least I haven't for many years. And I've just kind of let voices and chatter and ideas and concepts run amok in my brain that aren't mine, they aren't my own. They've been absorbed from the outside world and planted in there, hammered in there, and I'm just starting to like let a lot of that go and it feels so good. I just wanted to make this video because I know that anxiety is something that so many people struggle with it's just I mean if you have a heart and a brain and you live in this world you probably have a little bit of anxiety because it's tough out there and this is just some a small thing that I've started doing that really really helps and I definitely had a lot of preconceptions before I started of what it should be and look like and so it really intimidated me and I, I didn't do it for so long because I was like oh that's not me I'm not that person but if I can do it you can do it five minutes easy peasy so I hope this video can help you definitely give it a try I'm linking the one below that works for me comment if you do and let me know what you think or share with me some of your favorite meditations if you have some guided ones because I'm always looking for new ones as well okay thanks so much and I'll see you guys in the next video